Mr. President, please fire Praveen. That is the call being made by Mr. Khaleb Kachalia, the Democratic Alliance's Shadow Minister of Public Enterprises. He is with us now. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, Minister Praveen Gordon was supposed to rescue South Africa's struggling SOEs from the damage done by state capture. How has he done so far? Well, if, if I were to mark him in an exam on this, I'd give him a resounding fail. Because in all the time he has been there, everything has got worse. The outputs from the various state-owned enterprises have become worse in terms of generation, in terms of logistics, in terms of what Danelle is doing, in terms of what they've been able to garner in terms of uh, uh, contracts and deliver on them, how SAA is doing financially. And you can go on, except for SAFCOL, which is holding its head above water, thank God. So in outputs, he's done appallingly. In terms of governance, which is allied to outputs, he's done worse. We have a revolving door of board members, of C-suite members, of CEOs, of CFOs, of everyone who is in a position to achieve anything. And the irony is that Minister Gordon is the minister responsible for appointing these people in the first place. So he searches hard and far to find people, and generally people, who come from his own milieu, his protégés, he puts them in these particular positions. They're destined to fail because of the policies he's instituted, because of the various lack of governance or absurd governance that, that exists there, and all sorts of other matters that were within his purview to truncate in terms of, shall we say, red tape and the like, they are destined to fail, even if they were competent. And I say even because most of them are not competent. However, they are then destined to fail. Then he points his finger at them and says, they must leave. Then members of the board like Mpo Makwana get fed up and say, I'm going to leave. And we have this absurd situation where we have a plethora of acting CEOs for lengthy periods of time who are in our most crucial SOEs, who are not able to deliver and don't have the mandate to deliver. The governance is in a mess. The structures of these SOEs is in a mess. So with what I've just said, if I were to ask you, who is responsible? Anybody with half a brain would say, well, it looks like the shareholder is responsible. Who's the shareholder's responsible? Who's the shareholder's representative? It's the minister. Can you please give us an update on the board and executive at the major parastatals? Well, I I issued a statement this morning. I don't have it in front of me. Uh, we have we have a we have you know what's happened at Transnet. We have had the the CFO mm -hmm. leave. We had a CEO of the Port Authority leave and we had the general CEO leaving. We have uh, acting, C uh, 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 acting CEOs in place who have come from pipelines who are now going to uh, be responsible for the entire company which, cons which consists of pipelines, which consists of freight and consists of rail. Why those three should be put together, God alone knows. But there you have it. And she now must run these entities as an acting CEO. Then we have... ESCOM, where we have, and after Andre de Reiter left um, almost 10 months ago, we have uh, uh, an acting CEO who is about to leave in December, and no one in sight to take his position. I wonder why. Uh, those are the two most important SOEs that we exist, uh, that we have. Then we have SAA, an acting CEO there, no financial statements. So we don't know whether this albatross is flying or dying. Then we have SA Express, bankrupt, liquidated, gone out of the window. Then we have Danelle, acting CEO. Then we have, within Danelle, a complete inability to manage the cash position to fulfill the order book which they say they have. 
Alex Go, acting CEO. The previous CEO uh, left under a cloud which has never been resolved. And as I say, that only leaves uh, Safkol with a reasonable position uh, under the aegis of this minister. Now, if if that was a scorecard, it's a pretty bad scorecard. In the private sector, if that was your responsibility, they would be holding your feet to the fire to say, deliver or go. And as he, haven't, as he hasn't delivered, they would show him the door. But because he is the darling, if you like, the chief supporter of, uh, of President Ramaphosa, there seems to be a lot of slack that's cut for him. His minister, his ministry is going to exp- going to disappear in any event. So maybe they're saying, "Ah, you know, just leave it be. This ministry is going anyway. We'll deal with it later." But you know what? In the interim, the country is suffering. In Transnet alone, there's a billion rand a day in interest payments that they have to cover. Never mind the cost to the economy. That's just one company. You know what happens in in ESCOM. It's similar. This is untenable. How can anybody in any conscience continue like this? But the ANC government does. I'm flabbergasted. Now, what should we make of the fact that during the height of state capture, Transnet was still able to keep the export industry going, but now um, it is not? That tells your story without even expanding on it. I mean, just think about it. It's hollowed out at the height of state capture, but it's managing to achieve what it is set out to do in terms of its mandate while it's being hollowed out. So the financial constraints will come later, but the operational constraints were held in check and were being attended to. Come, Minister Gordon, the finances got worse and the operational elements have got even worse. Now you have a double whammy. And that's the responsibility of the minister. The shareholder has brought this upon himself. Now, when you call for somebody's resignation or for somebody to be sacked, it usually happens. So what hope do we have of the president heeding this call from you to sack Minister Praveen Gordon? Well, I can only say from my lips to God's ears, but uh, (laughs) I don't know. Minister Gordon will in all probability be cut slack because he's not going to stand again for uh, uh, as an MP. He's been a dutiful and faithful uh, acolyte of the, uh, of the president, and they will cut him slack to l- let him run with some face saving until his term ends. But his face will be saved while the countries will be destroyed. Uh, that is the tragedy. And unless the, minister, uh, the, the president hears that and acts on that, then the president is also culpable. Thank you. That was Mr. Khaleb Kachalia speaking to Biz News about the urgent need for President Cyril Ramaphosa to sack Minister Ravin Gordon. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.